All right, welcome to Make a Path Presents. Let me move this back a little bit here. Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today we're going to continue talking about All of Us Are Dead. I hope that's the title. I don't know what's with this title, but I always want to say something a little different. Anyhow, this is uh, uh, Season 1, Episode 2. I got confused. It says Episode 2 twice. Anyway, uh, let's kick it off. Spoiler free, go watch it. That's my only recommend. Other than that, we are going to talk about spoilers. This episode was a lot of fun. We might not review all of them. There's 12 of them. If you're a zombie fan, I give it a high recommend. I've only seen at this point until uh, the first 10 minutes of episode 3 because I walked back in the room. My daughter wanted to continue watching without me. But uh, episode 2 kicks off with... Probably the big negative for me, which is the school not taking this serious. There's a zombie outbreak. It's supposed to be a grounded show. And there's a teacher that, you know, chained a student up. He thinks, or it looks like the student was assaulted and abused, bloodied in the face, you know, drugged up. It's just off the wall. And the principal's like, oh, no, what are you, what are you doing? Come and handle it internally, and the one teacher's like, yo, there's a zombie outbreak, what are you talking about? That part ju is just, it seems a bit ridiculous. Anyhow, it seems a bit much. But then we kick into a full-blown, crazy cafeteria. It also reminds me a little bit more of Train to Busan, because you got the fast-moving zombies, but this is where they come plowing through the door. I was trying to show some scenes because it looks cool. It's, I was trying to, if you look at the camera angles, I was trying to figure out how to word it where it's not blurry, but there's a lot going on. However, the choreography is impressive, yet at the same time, it's hard to tell what's going on. So it's got a bit of, it's a, I'm a bit mixed. And just real quick, I was trying to figure out the right word for it because it isn't blurry but it's like it's blurry but it's not what they're doing is they're shaking the camera they're like it's like more of a vibration of the camera maybe this will be a good little yeah i dig that so all right so they got some of these cool scenes but you can see some of it <laughs> and i love how they don't cut so you got some good action some of it, it is a bit too much shaky cam. Uh, but they get out of this and it is a, a mad dash from the cafeteria. They go to a hallway. They're ripping out windows, ripping off doors. There's one uh, one corny scene with a door. But a lot of that is fun. Now, at this point, th they even talk about Train to Busan uh, more. And it reminded me of a toned down scream where it has that meta. Like this is uh, All of Us Are Dead is a, is a bit like Scream. The characters are in a horror movie, but they also watch horror movies. These kids have watched zombie movies, but now they're in a zombie uh, outbreak situation. But again, it's a lot more toned down so far as of episode two. I would imagine some of that is going to spill over because it makes sense to keep that meta going, uh, especially with how they're going to survive. But I was thinking now, since they introduced us to these kids, how are they going to seamlessly, in, a, in an organic way, get the kids to reunite? Because they're in the cafeteria. Now they're outside. They're gonna, there's going to be a situation where they, they make it back inside. And they do it in a simplified way that I loved and I thought it was real clever. They have a main classroom, one of their main classes. We saw a lot of the kids in that class. And they all managed to go for that room. Uh, it's on a different floor. I forget what floor. But they all go there and that's how they uh, reunite. And I thought that was fantastic. And it's great action getting there. Again, it's the fast moving, cracking, crack bones type zombie contorting their muscles and body and all this crazy shit. I think the girl even goes to the hospital and she... It, it reminded me of a... Rev not a reverse, but a similar feeling I got watching uh, The Exorcist as a kid. Uh, not exactly the same, but in The Exorcist, the girl's head starts spinning. Well, this zombie starts lifting up and then just cracks her spine backwards. Maybe we'll show a little clip. <laughs> yeah, so these guys get it. Uh, they make it into 
this classroom, a handful of them reunite, and now they're stuck in this room. We get a view of bouncing around between the doctor who is, um, not the doctor, but the scientist who is responsible for it. I don't know what was going on with her. I'm totally lost on how her story is going to relate because she's pregnant and I'm just at a loss. Yeah, this was wicked. Look. (laughs) Yo, (laughs) this sounds too. (laughs) Oh, wait a minute. Yo, me and my daughter rewound this like five times. This shit is hilarious. <laughs> what does it remind me of? Poltergeist? Is that it? With the guy with uh <laughs> I think it's poltergeist. Isn't it where he has the slug in the bottle and he runs across the room? Yeah, this right here. <laughs> so she's hauling ass. She's an ankle biter officially. And I don't know if the zombie had shattered the bones. And she can't get up. And I'm assuming that's why she's walking like this. But we'll see. Anyway. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) I love that. Just quickly goes around the corner. Coming to get you. Uh, The archers. They only give us a little bit of a tease. I'm excited to see what they do. Because this adds uh, some interesting kill shots. And some action. And some warriors. They already set this girl up as a failure. And for some reason... uh, it's it's quite clear she's n- going to be n- not a failure. And I'm excited to see what they do with that. But they have to barricade this. Uh, they get a call center, which was really cool. Hey, go and call the school and verify. They get a call for zombies and they're joking around about it. And then this other girl. Does the person have some type of weapon? She's biting them. Yeah, this other girl gets a call. Someone else gets a call. It beeps like crazy. In my comic, Doomsday Kingdom, perfect idea for a plug, doomsdaykingdom.com, issue five and six for the first time in physical form in a single floppy comic. It's up for pre-order, doomsdaykingdom.com. Anyhow, or you can get volume one. We still got about 30 of them left. There's a a gift set. You order it now. You get the freebies, uh, whatever's remaining. Anyhow. I have a similar scene because I love that as a zombie fan where one of the lead characters is a bartender and her phone beeps, this guy's phone beeps, and then the whole restaurant starts beeping like crazy and it's a a, a county-wide alert on the phone. Same thing for like an amber alert you get on your phone. That's what gave me part of the idea for that scene. But they do it here with the call center, which is really cool to help build up that it's more than just a school, which I'm interested in how that's going to play out because I thought it was just the school somehow. Maybe it was this private school that uh, there was an out zombie outbreak and maybe it was a little bit like rec or quarantine where they quarantine the school off, but then send a rescue team in. Uh, but the kids got to hold out until that happens. But apparently that's not what's kicking off because we see outside of the school zone, uh, there's an outbreak starting. A teacher shows up, he ends up bitten, and we get more action. Um, this is the moment here. <laughs> yeah, they do this edit where they go into slow-mo. I think I missed it, though. He already he already ran with the door, and then they show him pick up the door in slow-mo, and now they're going to do an edit. Yeah, you can tell he's just starting to run again, but they do it like two more times. Yeah, here we go. He's just starting to run again. And they do that, I think, in three different action scenes here. And I don't know if it's their style or what. I really wish they didn't do it because it even um, uh, my 12-year-old daughter was dying. She was dying. It was was cringy as shit, she said. Uh, But I still love the whole chaotic mess going from room uh, to other room they're using the doors and the windows right here to barricade uh, to make it to the room just cool action set pieces navigating through this school yeah yeah obviously doors locked so they got to figure out a way to bust it out did i miss something i missed some kill but i i think that's coming up And I don't want to skip this one. Yeah, there's two things. Yeah, I really like this episode. There's two things that I really dig that they 
they did here with the suicide. The girl is up on the cliff. I think we're going to get the pole scene before that, though. Yeah, this was badass. The one girl is like, yo, don't you know how to kill zombies? That girl's bit. She goes to stab her with the pole. It's vicious. I'm not a fan of the ultra shaky cam. It's cool if they got a little bit of shake to it. But sometimes I feel like with, with fast zombies, even with a lot of these action set pieces, they hide some of it just by shaking the camera too much. And that's what I mean by it's not blurry, but it feels like you're watching something blurry because it's shaking all over the place. Anyhow, this was epic. I don't know. Maybe it's not the right spot. <laughs> yeah, the zombie's like, listen, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, really cool. What confused me, though, is this... Because this is under the brain. That I like. The Walking Dead does far too many poke, poke, stab, stab. Rosita has little nail-type weapon. They look like little nails. They're not, but... Actually, I don't know what they are. But they look like nails. And she scratches the zombie. It's supposed to be, like, taking part of their face off. But she basically scratches them and they die. But in this... Obviously, it goes in her mouth, misses her brain. And I thought that was badass. The The archery people show up and shoot the zombie. I didn't notice it until I watched it again. Yeah, that's not in the head. That's not in the brain. That's under the pole. That's even lower than the pole. But then I was thinking maybe the archer... Instead of going for like the brain brain, went for uh, the is it the brain stem? You know, whatever you know what I'm talking about, which in theory would shut it down all the same. I'm assuming that's what I'm going with. You guys let me know because it's either she totally missed the brain or it's something like severed the spinal cord. You feel me? Anyway, I thought it was badass. That's all we get of the archery people, though. Uh, they make an announcement. Uh, they're in the room. They're uh, dealing with just taking a moment after all the action. They're dealing with their shit. They're taking a moment. They cleverly distract you with the talk about the boys. And then this scene hits, and I like it. The way they did it, nice and soft. Now, in zombie movies, they always do that person got bit off screen. And I think they did something that fooled me. And I'll admit, I'm not easy to fool because I'm always looking for something. And this is a simple, this isn't even complex, but they got me. They introduced the coach and he was bit off screen. And then they were like, oh, he's bit, he's bit. So then at this point, it's slowing down. They're talking about the boys. I'm thinking they're going in that direction. I was a little bit suspicious that one of them got bit when they were doing the hallway just because they showed this one scene of a zombie going under at their legs. And it was the edit was a little weird. It was like they focused on it, but then they forgot about it. It would have been better if um, we saw one of them kicking the zombie away and then we could be like, oh, all right, you know. But it made me a little suspicious. But then I started writing it off because the coach was bit off screen. They're not going to do that twice. And then they do. And I liked it because of this. A nice soft approach. Two friends, best friends. She's comforting her friend. She holds her hand. That was the moment I was like, oh, she did get bit. You slick sons of bitches. I liked it. Now, the, I do want to mention this. Somebody said, hey, you don't like, so, or what, how did they put it? You don't like um, the dub. You, you only mess with subtitles. Something like that. I didn't know what they were saying because they said subs. And I said, uh, I left the message, but I want to make this clear. I encourage... And I watch in the original language. This is only defaulted because when I watched with my daughter, she does not like subtitles. But when I watch Train to Busan, every time I re-watch Train to Busan, and then when I watch this by myself, it's the original language with subtitles. I know subtitles suck. Uh, they get away with, you know, the, the dub here works fine. But there's just something about it being in the, the native tongue uh, with their own voices, their own expressions. You know, it fits better. I just I find it so much more pleasing. 
But I agree, sub reading the subtitles sucks. However, I do recommend it. Now, this was fire, though. Why are you so cold? That was the moment I was like, oh, she is bit. It does get a touch frustrating when she's she has to let go and she actually has to let go. And it, you know, it's a bit of a sledgehammer moment. We get it. But just having that go on and on and then her friend, her other friend uh, really pushed to let, you know, because she can't let go. They're, that's what they're going for. Something and maybe it's the length of the scene. I thought it was just drawn out a bit. And even afterwards, the aftermath, I'm fine with the flashbacks as well. Showing them as friends. I thought that was sweet. It worked for the moment. We're just getting into this. I would rather they do flashbacks instead of showing us a bunch of a montage of this best friend duo beforehand. Get to the point and then do it in flashbacks. Sometimes it works better. Uh, but even after, I, I would have expected him to talk a little more. Like, be apologetic, but also, like, yo, you have to understand, like, she is not herself. It was, there was just, like, a s soft touch to her shoulder. Like, are you, you're okay, you know? But I get it. Maybe some of the characters just aren't, uh, you know, that talkative. And the last thing, we have the rope. Bitch, please, you got these little tiny women with no upper body strength whatsoever. E even some of the guys, the wimpy guys, the heavier set guys with no body strength, upper body strength whatsoever. I get there's little footholds in it. That was clever. I like that. But they're not, like this chick here in the in the pink. She, she's not going down. She's like a twig. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, e even him, I, I don't believe. Most of them. I think they would just fall to their death. Uh uh, whatever they they skip them doing it some of them they 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 go to crawl out and they just edit and skip them it, it is what it is whatever and then last they end with a cliffhanger now this i i saw the beginning of the next episode i won't spoil it but in my eyes when i saw this ending i said to myself there's no way he's gonna die there's no way he can't it looks like he has to die there's no way he's going to survive because he's going out the window. Careful, careful. Okay, okay, okay. It was, it was, it was badass. I like it. If it, if they did this bullshit week to week, like the walking dead does, I would probably quit right now when I thought that's a warning sign. Nope. I'm out. And then I'll, I'll binge it because I don't got time for this. Oh, you know, over the top cliffhanger, but it's a fake out and it, you know, what's coming type fake out where it kind of deflates its own purpose. But, uh, knowing I could just pop on the next episode and, and get right to it, but still it was an exciting scene for the moment. It's still pretty cool. Yeah, he's done. He is done. There's no way he survives this again, s watching the end of the, the episode because of what they built him up as. I know he's going to survive. There's no way he, they're going to kill him. But he's done, yo. He should be done. I wish they filmed that differently. Because he should be done. Yeah, you're you're gone, bro. You're like you're f several feet away from the wall. That, this is pretty badass, though. Some of the zombies follow them. So there's four out the window. Five? No, four? I think they only show two fallen. Let's see if I remember right. Yeah, one, two. Okay, they cut it, but still, they don't have any sounds or nothing. Nope, just two. Anyhow, a little bit of flaws, but I really like this episode. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, the cheap fake-out cliffhanger, but I, I get what they were doing. They were really trying to end it with something... Uh, but again, it's, we know they're not going to, if he was really like legit, legit, I'd be like, yo, this show isn't playing. This show is not fucking around, but we know it ain't that because they spent too much time building him up. Anyhow, I really, really enjoyed the structure of this. They have a good chunk that is just action fighting surviving and getting away from zombies in this school from the cafeteria to outside to back inside to the hallway to classroom a 
uh, back into the hallway, up to the next floor, uh, you know, into another hallway with a locked door into the second classroom, out the window, down to a different classroom. They packed this episode again, an hour and some minutes, what, an hour and seven minutes long. They did a damn good job. This was fun. I like this one a lot. Couple small issues, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you guys let me know if, depending on how episode three is, I might start clumping them together or just talk about it all at once. You can let me know down below. Also, I'm trying to find time to talk about Ozark and let me know for sure. Uh, Dying Light 2 is coming out. I'm on the fence because I, I, I was mixed with part one. I've been dying to do another gaming stream. So I've been thinking about getting it on the PS5. It comes out in two days. Let me know. Because maybe we'll do that this weekend. I don't know. Thoughts and opinions down below. I'm done talking. It's your turn.